So now, if you've been on my channel before, you've heard me talk a lot about cost and why it's so important that we control costs in our business is for the obvious reason that when you first get started, you're not making a whole lot of money just yet. You don't have momentum. You don't have that traction that you're looking for. And you don't need to pull a whole lot of unnecessary weight, unnecessary cost behind you because it's going to slow your progress. So what we do is we streamline our business and we cut the costs that are not necessary. Now, with that said, a low board is a cost that we are very okay with because it's going to provide some things that was going to help us to move our business forward. But now there are some gadgets that low boards offers that we don't need when we first get started. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to take you inside my low board of preference. I'm going to show you why I've decided to use that low board. And I'm also going to show you exactly how I use my low board. I'm going to show you three ways that you can use a low board, how it can be beneficial to you and your business. So let's get to the business. All right, so as you can see, I've logged into the low board, so we're getting ready to get started here shortly, but I need your help before we do. I'm gonna make sure that you're squared away on the low board and you know how to use the low board. I need you to make sure that I'm squared away on the likes. Make sure you hit that like button. Make the like button turn blue. It helps me out a whole lot, help my channel to get viewed by a larger viewing audience. I certainly would appreciate that. Thank you so much in advance. And if you like these type of videos and you want more videos like this, my videos are centered around the freight broker business and small business ownership. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell and you'll be notified every time I release these videos. So now as it pertains to low board, you have some different options available to you. You have some paid options for low boards and then you have some boards that you don't have to pay for. I like two boards. I like the DAT board and I also like the truck stop board. Now, I've settled on the truck stop low board. I've had this low board since 2015 and I had DAT and truck stop at the same time and decided that I was going to use truck stop exclusively. The reason why I did that is because when I first got started in the business and I was using both boards, I wanted to get in contact with owner operators. The reason why I wanted to get in contact with owner operators more so than large carriers is because at that time, owner operators were more willing to work with me than large carriers were. So I wanted to get in contact with as many owner operators as possible. So when I would post loads to both of these boards, most of my calls would come from truck stops. So I chose Truck Stop to work exclusively with. Now you can use either board, whether that's Truck Stop or whether that's DAT, or then you might say, hey, I don't wanna pay for a low board. I wanna use a low board that's free. Now, of course, you know that might be a case of what you get what you pay for. I've never used free low boards. These are the two that I've used and I've settled upon Truck Stop for the reason I just shared with you. So now when you start working with shippers, shippers are gonna request rates from you in specific lanes. They're gonna say, hey Brandon, we need you to give us a rate within a lane that's moving from North Carolina going to Wisconsin. You're gonna dial in on that, get all of the particulars, the zip codes and all of that good stuff, but you're gonna need a place to go to where you can start to establish that rate. That is the purpose of a low board, at least that's one purpose, one of the main purposes of it. Another reason why we use low boards is because we use them to search for trucks in specific lanes. For example, if you've posted a load on a low board, and let's say you've posted that load from Green Bay, Wisconsin to Marshville, North Carolina. Well, now you need to find out how many trucks are in that specific lane. So you would do a truck search on that specific lane and it'll show you exactly how many trucks are in that lane. And then you'll be able to reach out to those trucks and negotiate that particular load movement. So that's another reason that we use it is to search for trucks. Another reason why we use a low board is to not only search for trucks, but to go in and post our loads once we receive those loads from the shipper. For example, the shipper has given me a load and said, hey Brandon, this is your load. We need you to move this load. We agree with the price that you've given us. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that to my load board and I'm gonna post it on my load board so the trucking community can see that. And now they can start to give me a call on those loads so that we can get that load moved. So those are the three reasons that you need a low board. Number one, you want to be able to search for trucks in specific lanes. Number two, you want to be able to go and post the loads that you've gotten from your shippers. And number three, you want a rate sourcing tool. So you'll be able to use that rate sourcing tool to go in your low board and find out the historical rates in a specific lane from the last seven days 
all the way up to the last 12 months. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go in and show you exactly how the load board works. I just wanted to give you an explanation and give you a brief description of how each section works, how posting loads work, searching for trucks, and a rate sourcing tool. Now I wanna go in and let you see how it works. We're gonna start off today and we're gonna be talking about using it for searching for trucks. Now why would you wanna search for trucks? Well, if you were getting a rate for a shipper, you wanna take a look inside that lane and see how many trucks are gonna be available to you. That way you know if it's tight capacity, then your lane is gonna be a little bit steeper. It's gonna cost you more to move that lane. If there is a whole lot of trucks in that lane, then you're gonna have more negotiating power. Maybe you won't have to pay as much for it in that lane, but it's important to know how many trucks are in a lane. So how do we do that? We go into our load board and we hit search for trucks, we hit this searching board or this searching um, label there and you'll see trucks, lanes, truck bids, auto match and now trucks come up and we would just hit trucks there and it's gonna take, in to take us to the truck searching part of our load board. Now, when it does that, I've already put in Marshville, North Carolina to Green Bay. It's gonna come up and show us the number of trucks that are available when that, within that lane. It's gonna give us the name of the truck, the phone number, tell us the date that it's available. It's also gonna show us the age, how long it's been available, and it's gonna show us the origination city, Florence, South Carolina in this case, and it'll say the distance from your originating point. Now your originating point is Marshville, North Carolina. So if you see here in distance, it says 64. That means that it's 64 miles from Marshville, North Carolina. So it's within 100 miles. So anytime you have trucks within 100 miles, they would be willing to go and get your rate or go and get your load. If it's more than that, then you know they're not so willing to do that. But here it is, everybody is within 100 miles, 100 miles, okay? So it shows us that we have about 10 trucks in this lane. So this is gonna give us a good feel for the number of trucks that we have in this lane. And we know by looking at this, we're gonna probably have some challenges in this lane. So when we start to give pricing, we're gonna give pricing based on tight capacity. But you wouldn't know that if you didn't have a load board where you could go in and search for the number of trucks in a specific lane. So that's the purpose of, you know, being able to use this load board to go in and find out exactly how many trucks are in the lane. Now I want to talk to you another part about the load board and that is the load port posting option. Now you would be posting your load after you have received it from the shipper. The shipper says, hey, you've we've, you're authorized to move the load. We're okay with the price that you've given us. Now you got to take that load to a load board so the trucking community can start bidding on it. So we're going to take that load to the load board here and we're just going to go to posting loads. You see up the top here, we have home, searching, and posting. We'll click on posting, and we'll be able to click on loads there, and now we can go and post that load on our load board. And we'll just go through the process here of putting in this information. If you see up across the top here, it has origin. We'll put Marshville, North Carolina in there. And then we'll put an NC there for North Carolina. Choose our reefer there for our trailer and then we're going to choose a destination there we said that we were going to be going to green bay wisconsin so we'll put green bay there you'll see state here and we'll put wi for wisconsin now you also hear, see here that there's a rate there we can go in and post let's say we wanted to put twenty eight hundred dollars on that lane we can go in and post twenty eight hundred dollars in there and when we post that it's going to post it out to the load board and show that Alliance Logistics has a load moving from Marshville, North Carolina to Green Bay. That's how we post a load and, and then the trucking community can see that load and they can start calling us to negotiate the movement of that load. So that's two things that we use it for, the rate searching and posting our loads. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is the rate sourcing tool called RateMate. Very, very good tool to have for your business. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at the rate sourcing tool I was telling you about earlier called RateMate. When you get a load board, usually you're gonna have the ability to search for trucks and the ability to post your loads. And you have to have an additional tool called RateMate if you have truck stop in order to source rates. Now, DAT has a tool called uh, DAT Express and they have a rate sourcing tool in that package. Now, if you pay more money, you can get more precise rates. And that's the same way with 
uh, truck stop. So the more money you spend, the more precise rates that you're gonna get, at least that's how it's advertised. Now with that said, this tool is called RateMate. And I think that it's a great tool. I've used it since I had it. It has worked well for me, but I don't depend on it to give me exact rates. I just depend on it to give me a starting place for me to establish my rate in that lane, okay? Because what you have to understand with rates, especially these rates that are on this low board, is they are average rates. That means that so many lanes cost more than this particular average and so many cost less than that. So you have to establish a point where you can get the load moved as a freight broker, okay? Now, so here it goes here. We're gonna go to the rate make page and it starts off just like all the rest of them. At the top here, we have some tabs, searching, posting, load manager, decision tools, my products. We click on my products and we come to the rate mate tool here. That's the rate sourcing tool that we were talking about. So we've already clicked that and we're gonna start out here with Marshville, North Carolina and Green Bay being our pickup and drop off points. So we've already put that in and then we clicked on find rates. And when we click find rates, it's going to come up and populate and show us what the rates have been in this lane for the last seven days all the way out to the last 12 months. So now if you take a look at this, you'll see that it says posted rate averages here. Then it'll say paid rate averages here and paid shipper rates. Now what we want to take a look here is at the paid shipper rates. Over the last 30 days, there have been four reports at $3,574, average total rate, and the average miles is 1,408 miles, and then the average rate to truck is $2.54 a mile. And if you look here, it's showing $2.64 a mile, and that's the average rate to shipper under our paid rate averages. And you'll notice that this number will change. Our average rate to shipper will change because that number is what we're going to the shipper with based on how much money we want to make as a freight broker. Because here it says, please enter your desired gross margin percentage. This will be used to calculate the average rate to shipper column. So if we see the average rate to shipper column now is $2.64 per mile. If we change this to 20% or to 15%, Mm -hmm. it'll recalculate that and it'll drop it down and it'll say now it'll say two dollars and 48 cents a mile so this changes based on how much commission you are going to want to make standard margin is about 15 percent sometimes you're going to make more than that sometimes you're going to make less than that but this is the rate mate tool and how you use that tool as a starting place to establish your rate Okay. You'll also notice on the side over here, there's some rate index, rate trending, fuel cost, trucks, pass watch, and get rate analysis, which we don't have access to there. So we're going to go into rate trending here. And it's going to give us a breakdown of what the rates are in this lane, all the way out from October back to November, 2019. And it gives us the average miles, average rate per mile, average fuel cost per mile. Also, if you go over here and you go into fuel costs, if you wanted to see what the fuel would cost you to move from Marshville, North Carolina to Green Bay, Wisconsin, you'll just hit fuel costs here. If it'll load up for us, and it'll show us what the fuel costs are. There we go. As a matter of fact, it's not giving us that for some reason right now. Okay. If you click on trucks, we can click trucks there and it'll show us what kind of activity we got going on in this lane. Let's big it up there so we can see it there. It'll show us the truck supply and demand. Marshville, North Carolina, loads picking up, 288. 411 here. Then if you see it comes down here, it gives us a broker negotiation strength. Neutral, not so bad, not so good. And then over here on the Green Bay side, if you're coming out of Green Bay, it's very bad. So that means that there's not a lot of trucks coming out of Green Bay. So that tells you that it's a seasonal thing. Weather is bad in Green Bay right now. So you're gonna be, it's gonna be hard to get trucks out of there, which automatically mean the, the lane is gonna cost you a little bit more money. 
or maybe a lot more. <laughs> Just depends. So now this is our rate mate tool. I want to give you an idea of how it works. Always remember that this is just a starting place for your, your rate. Some people use this as exact. I don't suggest that you do that. Just use this as a starting place and then dig down to establish your rate, what you can get the load moved at. Because what it boils down to is, you know, you negotiating with a truck driver and what that number is gonna be. Your, your way of negotiating may be different from my way of negotiating, so I may get, get numbers, different numbers than you get. So the whole idea here is to figure out what number you're gonna go to your with your go to your shipper at and to be able to make money when you sell that load to a carrier. Bottom line. So now here's a quick summary of what we just talked about in this video. We talked about truck stop and why we use truck stop as a load board. We told you that when we first got started in this business, we were using truck stop and DAT, and we decided to use truck stop exclusively because what we found is that when we were posting our loads on both of those boards, we were getting more calls from truck stop from owner operators and that's who we wanted to work with. So we decided to go with truck stop. And that's not to say that DAT is not a great board as well, because it is, it just depends on what your preference is. Our preference was truck stop. Now, the next thing that we talked about was how we used our load board. And we talked about three reasons why you need to use load boards and those are posting loads, searching for trucks, and of course for a rate sourcing tool. And then we went into our board and showed you how we post uh, loads, how we search for trucks, and how we use the rate sourcing tool. All right, so thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I hope you found this information helpful. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Thank you so much in advance. Also, I'm gonna leave a link somewhere on this video to my video called, What Do I Say to Shippers? This video is going to help you kind of shape the conversation, help you get started in the conversation that you're gonna have with your shippers. Thank me later. So until the next time, see you at the top because the bottom is much too crowded.